I'm back with another New Scott interview, and tonight we are at the Halifax Central Library in the Creative Room, and I'm here with Russell Center writer, producer, Tyler Burns. How are you doing tonight, Tyler? Not too bad, New Scott. No, this is where all the magic happens, the Creative Room. <laughs> um, before we get to the reason why we're here, explain to us how Russell Center uh, became a wrestling company in the Maritimes, and what your role is in with, within the company. Wrestle Center, basically, it started in March of 2014 with our first show. Uh, we formed the company. We had been filming wrestling shows, much like yourself, um, primarily with Chuck, just filming his shows. He hired us to film uh, some of his broadcasts. And at a certain point, we just said, you know what, this is something, if we're going to do it and really do it, it's something we have to do on our own um, because we just we had a different uh, formula than, than what he has, which is fine. Um, so that's kind of the short version of it. Uh, the, the way it actually started was we went to uh, one of the Royal Rumble pay-per-views. They used to broadcast them at uh, Famous Players. And when we were there, uh, I think it was Harry Smith was one of the entrants. And Jason said something. And then the guy sitting next to Jason said, I've wrestled him before. And Jason was like, you yeah, have? And he, and he was like, yeah. And it turned out it was Dave Floyd or Dave McDonald, whatever his name is, Dying My Dave. And he was like, see all those guys in the back row, they, they run a wrestling company. It was like J.P. Sims, Chuck Martin, uh, whoever else it was back in that year. So that's how we sort of got connected. We started, uh, I have a broadcast background, so does Jason. So Chuck started to hire us to film his shows. And after a couple of years, uh, Jason said, you know what? I'm buying a ring, but I'm, I'm only doing it if you're doing this with me. And I said, well, if you're going to buy the ring, I guess we might as well. And that's where it started. So we started in March, and here we are today. And your role within the company? Writer, producer. I mean, I wear a number of hats, but those are the primary two. Writer, producer, talent relations, uh, which is come into play leading into this show. Um, just everything. It's basically, it's the two of us behind the scenes. And then we'll have a, a staff the night of a show, as well as a roster, of course. All right, so the reason we're here tonight is because Russell Center announced the show for January 30th. Uh, this is Monday, yes? Yes. This, this is Monday, the show is this coming Saturday, yep. January 30th, and you had advertised the main event between J.P. Sims and Steve Arsenal for the IFWA uh, Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Steve went on a podcast and said a bunch of stuff. You got a hold of me and said you wanted to respond, and the floor is yours. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a number of things. Um, some of the things he said in that interview were truthful. Some of the things he said in that interview uh, were heavily spun to depict himself in a positive light and wrestle center myself, Jason, uh, in a negative light. And some of the things he said were just flat out lies. Uh, so I, I felt like uh, it did need to be responded to. Um, when I knew I was going to make an appearance here, I actually took a couple of notes. Uh, some of the things I felt that I, I'm not going to respond to everything he said because a lot of it's just his pettiness, but um, one of the big things uh, that he's been using as an excuse for what he's doing, which is basically trying to hold us up and say, look, if this match doesn't play out the way I want it to, then I'm not doing it. Um, and that is that is a, a very childish and highly unprofessional thing to do. And the way he's justifying it is by saying, well, they've baited and switched me in the past. So therefore, I'm justified in what I'm doing now. But the truth is, but with regards to Daniels in his title match, we originally approached, I approached Steve and said, it's you and Daniels for the title, Daniels going over. And Steve was fine with that. Um, he certainly was not turning down a match with Daniels for the title, Steve's first main event. So he was perfectly fine with that. And I said, uh, it's going to be... Daniel's going over with involvement from either Matt Bowen or Titus, probably Matt Bowen because we didn't know if Titus was going to be on that show. It was a Kenful show. And it was going to spin Steve off into a program with one of the two. Steve was fine with it. Um, then a couple of weeks later, it's, it was confirmed that we were doing this television thing with the Fight Network and that we're no longer, we can't use uh, Ring of Honor talent, we can't use TNA talent because we're now competing with them on that level. We're going to be airing. This TV special is going to air immediately after Impact uh, on the Fight Network. So at that point, I called Steve back and I said, it's your lucky day because things have changed. We're actually going to take the title off Daniels and put it on you. And he was over the moon. He was emotional on the phone. 
Um, he said he's going to bring his family there. It was I was happy, you know. That's, I respect that. I respect somebody that cares that much about what they're doing, and he does put a lot of time and effort uh, into his work, and it shows. I mean, he got over, but uh, so he was very very happy. Then we realized that contractually we weren't going to be obligated to to part ways with Daniels quite as early as we originally thought we might have to. Um, and at that point, I had to unfortunately call him back and say, look, things have changed again, and it's going to be Daniels either retaining the title or he may not be champion heading into that match. And Steve was upset, but I think it's important that you know that because Steve is now running around depicting it as we went to him and said you're winning the title and then switched it. When we originally went to him, we said it's Daniels going over. Uh, so I think that's important. Um, the other thing he, he says, uh, I mean, well, I, I don't know how much I want to bury Steve at this point because he is still with the company, at least for one more show, but there's certain things that, that he, you know, he said something about he wants to, he only worked with some of the young guys because he wanted to help them out. I can tell you our very first show, March 6th, he worked with Nick Diggs. He didn't want to put Nick over. Uh, we booked him for the show. It was him and Nick, and then all of a sudden we get the phone call, well, I, I got to go over. I'm like, what? What, what do you mean you, you got to go over? Keep in mind, I'd known Steve for about a year now from filming UCW shows. He said, well, I'm the UCW heavyweight champion, so I can't lose. And I said, okay, well then, you know, we're probably going to do an April show if this show is successful, or if not, maybe, maybe May or June, so we'll, we'll call you back then. He's like, what do you mean you're not going to book me? It's like, we're not booking anybody that has stipulations or criteria that they have to go over. Um, so then he backtracked, but eventually we did put him over. But even then, he was, he was really trying to politic. He likes working with the younger guys because he can call the match. He'll call it from start to finish, make himself look like a million bucks, make them look like a, you know, a bumbling idiot. And if they do go over, it looks like they just backdoor themselves into a victory. Uh, he never tries to make his opponent look good. Um, as far as Matt Sedal goes, that was a terrible match. And he says on this podcast that the reason it was terrible is because um, he was given guidelines in which to work from. The only thing that I told them was Steve goes over. Um, Steve and Sadal were there when I said that, and Sadal didn't really like it. And he came up with other suggestions. You know, he said, you know, if I don't go over, I can't do my shooting start. I said. All I can tell you is I need Steve to go over. He's our hero. We're moving him into a program with our champion. I need Steve to go over in this match. You guys have plenty of moves in your arsenal, no pun intended, that you can still put on a great match without the shooting star uh, finish, which is fine. I respect, you know, he didn't want Steve to kick out of it, and he didn't want to miss it. It's a little different when we're bringing in these out-of-town talent because we do broadcast on television, and they're aware of that. So they're sometimes a little particular over whether they win or lose. Um, but at that point, I don't know what happened. I, I mean, all I can assume is that Sadal just put together a match that, that wasn't great because maybe he was unhappy that he was losing. Uh, but even if that is the case, I still put the onus on Steve to say, you know what, I'm the, I gotta get my shit in in this match because this match is supposed to propel me. And I did everything I could after the match was over. And if I'm not mistaken, either you have an identical twin or you were the ref for that match. <laughs> so I was. <laughs> We did everything we could on TV to put that heat on me for the for the bad match instead of Steve because I didn't want Steve I didn't want people to be like that match sucked and it should have been awesome. Well, we know Sadal's awesome, so it must have been Steve. So I did everything I could to try to get the heat on me on TV, but the truth is I had nothing to do with it except for the fact that I said I need Steve to go over. So uh, and he's had a history of matches that weren't great with any you know some big money matches whether it was Rene Dupree, Alex Silva. Uh, there's been plenty of occasions where, for whatever reason, it just didn't materialize. Um, and he's always got excuses after the fact. So, but uh, he also says he didn't want that match. He very much wanted that match. It wasn't until after the match was over that he said that he didn't want the match in the first place. But if you recall, we had a fan vote to see who would have that match with Sadal. And he wanted it so bad, he was worried some of the other guys were going to rig the vote and come up with fake emails to try to win that match. And he was concerned about that. So. It's uh, just, again, it's just lies where he's trying to spin things to depict myself, Jason, and the company as these evil bad guys, and he's this noble hero, and that is supposed to justify uh, what he's doing right now. And if, if you know the whole story, it doesn't at all. So uh, those were just some of the points that I felt were necessary to, uh, to get out there. 
Um, do you think there's a chance that he won't show up for the match on the 30th? Uh, I, I think that's what he wants. I think he, um, he doesn't want to, he wants us to pull him off the show so that he can say, he can go to, to the public and say, look everybody, they, they pull, I would have been there if it wasn't for them pulling me off the show. Um, we're not pulling him off the show. Uh, Jason had sent out like a mass email to everybody because David had been trying to, to get some of our guys on his podcast and he said I would I would I would prefer you not go on that podcast given the fact that he buries us and he he's spread lies about us in the past and he works for the competition so uh, as soon as that email was sent out like 24 hours later it's announced he's going on the podcast and then he texted me after that and said so I guess I'm off the show and I said no I'll see you on the 30th and that's, that's the last thing that, uh, I've talked to him since then, but nothing's changed. That's the last stance I've had on it. So you think he's intentionally trying to get kicked off the I show? I think he would like to just be removed off the show rather than show up and put JP over. I think he'd prefer to just be removed. Does Russell Center have a contingency plan in place if that happens? Uh, we might throw you in there. <laughs> I, mean, I know you don't like JP either, so. <laughs> that's not true. I, don't... Well, I just assume nobody likes him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the point, too. Like, I'll say this. Um, they're both, JP's no princess, you know, he's, he's certainly done, if it was up to me, he wouldn't have been back. And I've spoke to Jason about this and I've spoken to JP about this. When he had his initial run as champion, he was an asshole. He was every bit as much of an asshole then as Steve is now. When he first came back in April and in June, he was completely different. And you were back, I think those were your first two shows with us or some of the first. March was my March. first. Yeah. He was a great guy backstage. He's, he was in the gorilla position for our June show, uh, t giving people feedback on their match. He was just in a great mood. And on the July show, and then even more so in September in Cape Breton, he's the same JP he was the first run, which is just egotistical, uh, unprofessional. You could say that's a strong word. I don't know if it is or not uh, with regards to him. And Steve and JP is kind of maximized because of their personal issues. I'll give you one example. Our Cape Breton show. So this is a show, they're both unprofessional. Steve was four hours late for that show. <laughs> so normally, like if I'm four hours late for something, I show up, I'm like, oh my God, I'm four hours late. Yeah, what can I do to make up for, for whatever? He shows up four hours late. I'm like, Steve, we gotta go over your stuff. He's like, well, I gotta smoke my cigarette first. So he's four hours late and he still has to go smoke a cigarette before he can come in and con conduct business. Uh, that show was supposed to be being invented with Steve, JP, and Julie, Triple Threat. And uh, I don't know if you were there for that. I wasn't. It was Jerry Farmer, actually, the whole show. And uh, so we're putting the match together and I was like, well, you know, one of the spots I need, I need uh, Steve, you to pin JP, have him pinned, but no ref. So either the ref can be knocked down or he can be out with Julian. JP's like, nah, can't do that. I'm like, what do you mean you can't do that? He's like, after it. Because whatever's gone on with them, we've never had them, we've hardly had them touch in our company. So everything with them has nothing to do with wrestling. It's all issues they've had prior to our company. But he's like, nah, you wouldn't do this, this, or this for me four years ago in Indian Brook. So I'm not doing anything to make him look good. And Steve says the same thing about JP. So as soon as JP said that, Steve just stood up and said, you know what, take me out of the match, I'll work somebody else. I was like, well, there's no one else really for you to work. This is supposed to be the main event. He's like, no, nah, just whoever it is. I said, well, I'll throw you with Dylan. He's like, fine. I said, it's going to be opening bell. He's like, that's fine. And he just walked out of the room. Um, so I already knew they had issues. But even then, um, and I think that's another important point. Steve says that we put him in this match with JP and said he was going over. So what actually happened was, and you were there for this, um, July 3rd, it was JP and Daniels. So JP beats Daniels. That's supposed to be the finish of the show. Uh, that was already enough, a title change. First time the title had actually changed from one guy to the next, because it, it had never changed like that. I ref that match too. Right, yeah. and, and the reason it had never changed from one guy to the next was because of JP's unprofessionalism, but that's another story. So JP celebrating in the ring, and I was in the gorilla position with Steve right next to me. He's like, dude, send me out there. I'm begging you, send me out there. I was like, eh, and, and the Daniels and JP match wasn't great. Um, it, it wasn't a home run match. So in my mind, I'm like, maybe the crowd does need something else on the end of this show. I don't know. And I said, go over to Jason. Tell him to hit your music. If he hits your music, go. And if he doesn't, then no. So Steve ran over to Jason. Music was, JP's music's playing, but he pointed at me and was like, whatever. Just 
Jason hit Steve's music. Steve went down, cut a promo. He referenced an August show that didn't exist <laughs> to show that it wasn't really planned. But he didn't say to me in Gorilla, send me out there, provided our eventual match is me going over. He just said, send me out there. So they went out there, did their little thing. It was great. The crowd was really, really into it. And they came back. There was no discussion that night about when the match would take place, who would go over when it does. It wasn't until we finally planned the show and we told Steve, it's JP going over. He was fine. He wasn't fine with it, but he argued it. Argued it, argued it, argued it. Um, we said that's, you know, we're not doing two title switches one after the other, ever. So that's where it's going to be JP going over. Um, that show didn't end up happening. That was going to be our September 10th show. The, uh, but they couldn't, and that's if you see the, the promo footage of me and Steve at the fair arguing, that's regarding the September show, not this upcoming show. Um, but again, it wasn't until recently where Steve says two weeks ago we, we told him it was JP going over. What actually happened is two weeks ago he's starting to realize we're not going to budge off what we're doing. So now he's getting pissed off because he's used to being able to politic or come up with these alternative plans. We can't switch something of that magnitude. That's our main event and it's our heavyweight title. So we're not going to switch things uh, just because Steve would like us to. It's just not the way we conduct business. Uh, so that's why he's upset. Um, and for me, I can respect the fact that he and JP hate each other. I don't like either one of them particularly much, but I, I would never let that get in the way of business. I treat the two of them the same way I treat everybody else. There's people I like a lot. Uh, there's people like yourself who I hate, <laughs> but I treat everybody equally. You know, I don't let uh, personal issues affect my business, but obviously they, they can't say the same. As a promoter, why would you risk putting the two of them together uh, knowing it could damage your show? Uh, at the time, I, didn't, I never thought it would get to this extent. I, I never thought we would be a week away from a show where we don't have a finish for the main event. And it's our biggest show we've ever done. I mean, this is being broadcast across the country. Uh, it's the most important show. It's the most expensive show financially we've ever put on. Um, but I, I never thought they would uh, show this level of unprofessionalism. I always thought at the end of the day, they would do business. Um, and again, I, I do see some of Steve's point. If it was Julian, I would be like, Steve's just completely unwarranted in his, what he's saying. It is JP, and a lot of what he says with regards to JP is accurate. But I, just never, I never thought they would... Uh, jeopardize business so and it's and it's JP as much as Steve it's not all Steve it is JP's has his share in this as well so uh, this video will be up tomorrow uh, plug the show well I mean we don't I, it will there will be a main event um, and what whoever's in the main events it will be a, we have, we've got a tremendous roster so uh, if Steve gets lost from Churro to Halifax and is not at the show and if he's not at the show that's because he chose not to show up. That's not us. We'll, we will not remove him off that show. Trust, I don't care. He could do anything. Um, unless he comes on this show. That, <laughs> that's where I would probably draw the line. But, uh, I mean, we're expecting him to be there. If, if, we, if he's not there, then that was his decision. We have a phenomenal roster of a lot of guys that would love to be put in that spot. So, if that's the case... I can tell you this, it will be a main event of two local guys, because I think that's important um, for our debut on the Fight Network. I think, I think we need a main event. That, that was the plan. We had other options. We could have done things that would get TV viewers, and we do have some surprises planned, we always do, but I think it's really important to close that show with two guys that, uh, that started it. All right, so this Saturday night, live at the Halifax Forum, 8 p.m. bell time, J.P. Sims versus Steve Arsenal, also... International wrestling superstar Colt Cabana oh, will yeah, be there. Oh yeah, he's on the show too. I mean, <laughs> right with that. I want to do something crazy to Scott. What are your thoughts on this? As someone that's been in the business for 45 years. <laughs> 46. 46. I mean, you, I don't know if you know these two guys. I've known them both for about three years. But have you seen anything like this? I've never seen people not willing to do business. Um, 
with each other. I've known so many people that hated each other. Right. Like in the sharing a locker room that's two by two. That's the that will thing. go out there and and do business. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people that hate each other. Yeah, and it's shocking. Yeah, because if you come from like another form of the entertainment sector, that doesn't happen. No, in wrestling, like there's certain guys that legitimately hate each other. The bad guy from Die Hard it didn't say he's not going to put over Bruce Willis. Right, <laughs> but, I, but I understand it's different in wrestling. Still yeah. brought up a good point. He said, you know, he has to take his character to other companies and draw money. So I understand why they're a little more protective. Like if I was in a film, I'm not gonna go to the director and say, you need to rewrite that scene where I look bad, otherwise I'm not doing the scene. I would be blacklisted from the film right. industry for life, trust me. But in wrestling, it's a little different because in theory, I would have to take my character from that film to other films and draw money. You know, they have to go to other companies, but I, I thought we've used Steve very well. You know, he says he got over organically, and they say that Suave got over organically. Uh, Suave won our tournament, won the ladder match, became our secondary champion. Sounds like a pretty good push to me. Uh, we pushed the hell out of Steve. So I, I think he deserves us a little bit of, of uh, owes us a little bit of credit for the fact that people are even talking about him today, because they weren't two years ago. Uh, so I always, I think that's, you know, for him to sort of say he got over in spite of us, I think is a little ridiculous. And, for, and the fact, if he did give us a little bit of credit for where he is today, maybe he'd be more willing to do business. And if he had, like, we don't want him back at this point, but had he conducted business properly, he would have been fine, trust me. So there's no chance after the 30th that Steve Arsenal I mean, Arsenal he said it back. himself. He said even, you know, I don't think, it, I, I'm sure if I called him right now, uh, should I do it right now and say, <laughs> you know what, we're, we'll put the belt in. You want me to call him live on this show? <laughs> you can do whatever you want. But... <laughs> If you have a coin and you flip it... I don't have a coin. Okay. It probably wouldn't flip anyway. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, if we said we were putting the belt on... It'd be two-sided. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Like mu like much of the uh, wrestling industry. But No, I think if we said we were going to put the belt on Wait. you, I think you would stay. But we would never do that. And just given how everything's happened... Um, it's two-sided makes sense? No. Oh, Double-headed. There you go. <laughs> well, I got some of those, too. But uh, I don't know what that means. But, no, I just... I. I we would know if if we put ourselves in this type of situation again after what happened this time around, then it would be our own fault. You know, if we put him in a second main event on another show, and then it didn't happen, whose fault would it be? It'd be right. ours. So it's just too risky. But so it is his last match, regardless of what happens. I don't know what's even to this day. The, the last thing that was sent to him uh, was DQ, which I would hate to fucking do. Cause not, there's nothing more disappointing than a DQ finish to a, a match you're looking forward to, to see who's gonna win. Uh, but I'm just trying to get the match to happen, but even DQ, he said, no. And JP said, no. And, he, <laughs> and even though I, I and, and here's the other thing too. I went over in overtime right now. Oh, but, that's uh, fine. I've, I, over the last two years, I've put together some fairly effective finishes that have gotten over quite well um, and, and had the desired effect, including the first show we ever did where AJ pinned JP, won the title, but the match had never officially restarted, and the crowd was going bananas for that. I think that's kind of, that show as a whole, but even particularly that finish, kind of set this tone for this company. I think I've brought some equally um, effective finishes to the table for this match, and S Steve and JP have shot down every one of them. So it's like, what, what do you do at that point? We still don't know what to do. I don't want to do a DQ, so in some way, I was like, I'm glad that's not going to happen, but I would have loved to have a DQ just to get the match in the ring. And we're certainly not going to do a non-title match where Steve goes over JP. I don't care. He, he said, well, you could have the, a number of people interfere to protect JP. Why in God's name would we have the guy who's <laughs> leaving our company to go work for our competition beat our champion on his way out? doesn't make sense. So, Just send him to the ring and see what happens. Ah, uh, that could happen. <laughs> that, we've done similar things, so you never know. <laughs> you never, you'll be rough in that match, new Scott. How about this? Sweet. You're rough <laughs> and you'll tell them the finish. All right. Sounds good. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you for uh, coming on and telling your side of the story. Is there anything you'd like to say in closing? No, I think we covered it all. All right. Thank you very much for your time. I'll see you Saturday.